Hey, this is Mr. Aiden. This is AP Chemistry, the 2017 AP Chemistry exam. We're going to be going through each problem this week for the 2017 exam, and we're going through problem number one. So let's get to problem number one. Problem number one, we, you can see we have a balanced chemical reaction here between CS2 carbon tetra, sorry, CS2, that's carbon disulfide, plus three chlorine gases gives you carbon tetrachloride and S2Cl2 gas. And we were trying to synthesize CCl4, carbon tetrachloride. And you can see right here it says chlorine gases initially run out of pressure right here. And we want to know the number of moles. This is a gas problem. So what are we going to use? We're going to use PV equals NRT. So our pressure is 0 0.40 atmospheres. You can see we have two significant digits, which means that we're going to round our answer to two significant digits. We have a volume of 25.0 liters. We're trying to find the number of moles for the R. We're going to use 0 0.08206, just like uh, it says in our equation sheet, because it's liters, atmospheres, moles, Kelvin. And my temperature in Kelvin has to be 393 Kelvin because we're going to add 273 to this 120. And so I find my calculate my number of moles of 0.31 moles of my Cl2 gas. Okay, that was worth one point. One point for using Pivnert there. Okay, so A was worth one point. A1. Then we go to A2. And it says, how many grams of CS2? Well, we are taking a look from the number of moles of the Cl2, which is what we just found, to sorry, of the Cl2, which is what we just found, to the moles of the CS2. So I know there's three moles of the Cl2 for every one mole of the CS2. And I know I have 0.31 moles of chlorine gas. That's what I just found. Which means I can figure out how many moles of the CS2 by simply dividing by 3. And that ends up giving me 0 0.10, 0 0.10 moles of the CS2. Now I can use that moles, 0 0.10 moles, of the CS2 and I can multiply by his molar mass which is 76.13 grams per mole and I end up getting uh, if I round my answer correctly using all my significant digits um, I'm gonna end up getting 7.9 grams of the CS2 7.9 grams of the CS2 and that is worth one point for finding the ratio here, the new number of moles. Remember, that could be implicit, which means it could be worked into your problem. And one point for this right here. So two points for letter A2. Two points for letter A2. So let's move on. It says, at 30 degrees, the reaction is thermodynamically favorable. What do I know about thermodynamically favorable? The delta G is equal to zero the K is going to be greater than 1. But no reaction is observed to occur. However, at 120 degrees Celsius, the reaction occurs at an observable rate. It says explain, now, why will it not occur? Even though the delta G is negative, what do we know? Why won't it occur? Why, why is there no reaction going to occur? Is the activation energy is too high. The activation energy is too high. And we call that kinetic control, kinetic control. So it, it is found to be under kinetic control, K kinetic control, OK? Well, the first one says, explain how the higher temperature affects the collisions. Well, what do we know is at a higher temperature, there is going to be, especially my gas molecules, higher temp, what's going to happen is more kinetic energy. More kinetic energy means more speed of the molecules. More speed of the molecules. What does that mean if there's more speeds of the molecules? There is going to be a, uh, a greater, well, the kinetic energy is talking about the greater uh, force in the collisions. 
the greater speed is going to result in greater greater frequency in the collisions. And so we get one point for A1. One point for A1. Or sorry, B1. B1. So uh, always think about with gases, higher temperature means more kinetic energy. More kinetic energy results in greater force in the collisions. Higher temperature also also equals more speed of the molecules. More speed of the molecules more more speed of the molecules means more frequency of the collisions. More frequency of the collisions. And then we have this uh, this graph down here. It says the graph shows the distribution of collision of the reactant molecules at 120. Well, we're going to do a graph um, at showing showing my graph at 30 degrees. Well, what happens with my graph at 30 degrees? It's going to be higher because we still have the same number of molecules, but it's going to tail off and be less. There is less particles that are less molecules that have enough kinetic energy. Enough kinetic energy. So this is actually where two points, believe it or not. B2 is where two points. One one point for the peak being above and to the left of your graph, and one point f earned for the curve that is below the given curve in the region of the activation energy. So you get one point for that. So that is worth two points for B2. Now we're going to a Lewis dot diagram. We're going to do the Lewis dot diagram for S2Cl2. Remember the first thing we want to do is add up our valence electrons. We have six valence electrons for each sulfur, so it's 12. Seven valence electrons for each chlorine, so it's 14 because there's two of them, which means we have 28 electrons to use. Remember, halogens will always just do a single bond, so we are going to be single bond, single bond in each. And then what do we always want to do? We always want to do single bonds and add any leftover electrons before we have to borrow. And we have eight leftover valence electrons, so we're going to put it right there. And that is our 28 valence electrons. And that is going to be our Lewis dot structure. And that is going to be worth one point. Okay. And then they want to ask, what's the approximate bond angle of the CLSS bond angle? So we're looking at this middle, the always the middle atom right here, what's his bond angle right there? Well, this one has four bonding sites, four bonding sites. It has two unshared pairs of electrons. Four bonding sites is going to be an sp3 hybridization. Remember, sp3 is going to be a tetrahedral, trigonal pyramidal, or bent. In this case, with two unshared pairs, it will be a bent shape and all they want to know is bond angle which is going to be about 105 degrees okay and you get and you get one point believe it or not for anything between 104 degrees and 109.5 degrees I always like to stay consistent Tri tetrahedral 109.5 trickle pyramidal 107 bent is going to be 105 and they give you obviously a a range there let's go to D D is the last part of this problem. And you can see right here we have another chemical reaction. We have CH3Cl plus chlorine gas gives you carbon tetrachloride and hydrochloric acid. Uh, hydrochloride gas, it's not hydrochloric acid, hydrochloride gas. And D1 says identify all the intermolecular forces in HCl. Well, remember HCl, H looks like this. And you can see chlorine is going to have a negative side. We have the hydrogen is going to be have the positive side. And so this is going to be a dipole to dipole forces. There's no hydrogen bond in here because H is not bonded to F or N. It's just dipole to dipole forces. And of course, there's always going to be London dispersion forces. And so you're going to get one point, but it's one point you have to give both of these forces, the polar forces as well as the LDF forces. And then uh, number two says, what can be inferred about the relative strengths of the CL CCL4 liquid and the HCl liquid? And you can see, it says, at the completion of the reaction, the chemist successfully separates CCL4 and HCl okay, by cooling it, at which CCL4 condenses. 
while HCl remains in the gaseous form. So if HCl remains in the gaseous form, that must mean it has weaker forces than the CCl4. CCl4, as it condenses, it must have stronger forces. Well, what type of forces does a tetrahedral CCl4 have? It only has London dispersion forces. So this is one of those problems where why is the London dispersion London dispersion forces stronger than something with dipole-dipole forces? Well, the it has more LDF. The LDF makes the molecule more polarizable. If the molecule is more polarizable, it will condense sooner. Or you could say it has stronger intermolecular forces. So you get one point for your valid justification there. And so that is the 2017 AP Chemistry exam number one. Let's review our points. We get one point for A1, two points for A2, that's three points total. Then we get one point for B1, we get two points for B2, that's six points total. We get a seventh point for C1, eighth point for C2, ninth point for D1, tenth point for D2. Ten point problem, make sure you give me you, how you did. That's the 2017 AP Chemistry exam for your response, problem number one. See you, see you, see you, see you tomorrow. Bye.